Manabi wins Nobel Prize for a Climate Model. This is a climate craze update on climate modeling. And here is the who and what is behind the grand prize. Suki Minabi is a senior meteorologist in atmospheric and oceanic sciences at Princeton University and its Geophysical Fluid Dynamics Laboratory. Minabi was awarded the 2021 Nobel Prize in Physics for the physical modeling of Earth's climate, quantifying variability, and reliably predicting global warming. Wow, his model reliably predicted global warming. That's terrific. He is the brains behind Princeton's highly acclaimed GFDL climate model, the Geophysical Fluid Dynamics Laboratory model. So let's see how good it did. This is a temperature comparison chart of global climate models versus climate observations. The left side, or y-axis, represents the relative change in global temperature. The bottom, or x-axis, represents the years from 1975 to 2025. The thick red line is the average of 102 climate model temperature predictions. That red line looks very hot. The blue and green lines below are the actual observed global temperatures. They look much cooler. The blue line is the average weather balloon data, and the green line is the average satellite data. They represent reality. For those new to this type of graph, the name of the game is to get that red line as close as possible to the blue and green lines. All but one of the 102 models run too hot. So let's look at how they verified. This graph shows the 102 individual climate models, not their actual line graphs, but their hot temperature biases. The red line in the middle represents the thick red line on the original graph, which is the average temperature forecast of all the climate models. These blue and green lines represent the weather balloon and satellite observational data as shown on the prior graph. Each of these 102 gray bars represent the relative heating forecast. The higher the bar, the hotter the climate model. Those gray bars are sequenced from the hottest climate models to the coolest models. So let's see which model is the hottest. Well, how about that? It's Manabi's GFDL model. It's the hottest model of them all, and of course that means the least representative of actual observed temperature data. So how did the news media react to this Nobel Prize event? Some internet sites picked up on it like this one, Nobel Prize awarded for the worst climate model. But the mainstream news was too embarrassed to tell the truth. They dared not reveal the Nobel Prize statement itself, especially the phrase reliably predicting global warming. Instead, they concoct smoke and mirrors propaganda, such as this New York Times headline, Nobel Prize in Physics Awarded for Study of Humanity's Role in Changing Climate. They never mention exactly what the prize was for, and definitely nothing about Manabi's climate model accuracy. The details are embarrassing, just like Al Gore's award. Remember Al Gore? He got the Nobel Peace Prize in 2007. He got the prize for a failed climate forecast, before they even failed. Now that's an amazing achievement. And why did his forecast fail? Because he used those climate models which run too hot. The Nobel Prize is no longer an award for honest achievement, but is now used as a propaganda tool to further political agendas. Yogi Berra understood honest achievement. He also knew forecasting is very tough. He said it's tough to make predictions, especially about the future. He should get a Nobel Prize for honesty. And so Manabi goes home with the best prize for the worst product. Even though his climate model had the worst verification data, it did a great job of predicting global warming, but not for planet Earth. So stay tuned for my next video. It will reveal which climate model was the most accurate and which should have won the Nobel Prize. In the meantime, enjoy our wonderful climatic optimum, for the alternative can be quite chilling.